some of that awareness is created here. An awareness of, I know that my pelvis could go that far back, but instead I'm gonna engage my abs, keep my diaphragm to my pelvic line close. So if I was to measure my diaphragm and my pant line, I want that to stay the same, no matter what. A massive extension, I want that to stay the same, yeah? So that awareness, that clarity of what that feels like, you create that here. So now we're gonna go to all fours, you're gonna have a stable spine, and you're just gonna kick your heel up to the sky. Let's do six on each leg. Lovely, get the range, but keep the spine closed. Take a look at this. So you could go down and up here and your shoulders could be behind your hips or you could keep your shoulders forward, your abs on and actually hinge. Hinge directly just at the hip. It's all bum action. All bum action. all the way through. Push all the way through without arching your back and losing your diaphragm. I believe most of our core work should be encouraging this, this ability to move your limbs without your trunk having to be sacrificed. Lovely, stop there. Dorsiflexion, I want to see it here. Mm. It's gone already. I want you to lock it in and it's not allowed to move. But good, your, your foot still has to finish over here. Yeah, good. When it finishes, it can't have a bent knee. It's got to be straight. Yeah. Yeah, good. And with a straight leg, yeah, good dorsiflexion, good. Reset so you can get your bum higher again. This is going to go from a plank into a glute bridge. Yeah, we're going to go in this direction from a plank into a glute bridge. And that might look like this. Look at this. N knees never touch the floor. No. Okay, we're going this way. Elbows, elbow plank. Awesome. Into glute bridge. Lovely. Awesome. Excellent. Jones. 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 Two more. Lovely, change direction. Really cool. Okay, stop there. I summarize it, I'm a bit dyslexic. I can read and I pull lots of information and I normally pull it down into three boxes. Being reactive is all about your foot, yeah? Can you have a stiff spring-like foot that lands under you, that comes back to you under your body? So that's reactivity. Projection, when it comes under your body, do you, can you produce enough force in that very small amount of time that pushes your hip forwards, yeah? And once you finish pushing your hip forward, can you aggressively bring this leg through? And once you've brought it through, can you aggressively pull it down? So this aggressive switch of your limbs is switching, yeah? We've seen it all before. So we'll start with reactivity. We'll go with double leg pogos to the white line. Minimal ankle movement, minimal knee bend, Good. Thai world, too much upper body movement, okay? Think of it as a mini squat, not a mini deadlift, yeah? So this stays really quiet. This spine of the way became really lots of action at your toe, yeah? I want you to be able to get 
your bounce and your air time without your ankle have, having to move so much, yeah? Um, and you're almost actually relatively flat footed and that's not a bad thing, but you've got to make sure your kicks in earlier so that it's sharp. Because it's more flat footed, there's actually a bit more sink. Yeah, makes sense? And again. Awesome. Really good. Stop there. Great, walk it back. A physio term is called Trendelenburg, and that's like a bad posture when, when someone, it's like when a woman in a sexy red dress is walking and her hips are going from side to side. Yeah, that's a trend, that's a Trendelenburg, right? And all we're doing is in sprinting, trying to avoid that. So to get it, everyone come over to the wall. And the aim here, so me, everyone face me when they're doing this. The aim, drop the hip, and raise the hip. Drop it and raise it. I'm not bending my knee. The of raising it is what we should be doing on ground contact. We hit the ground really hard, raise our hip. Good, keep going. Sorry, change over. Other side. What muscle group is working there? Glute. Which which one? The standing one or the moving one? The, so the free one. Yeah. I want the standing one. I want the standing one because you're lifting. That's why I asked you back. So that's kind of glute into QL. Yeah. I want this to push you up. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Good, change to the other side. That's not stable, I've never noticed that. Um, so look at this. You can do this with your hip, the, the free hip behind you, or you can do it with the free hip in front of you. I want it to be in front of you. And actually try it, try it with the free hip behind you. So not just foot, but it's like rotate your, your hip towards me. I want to see your hip bone. Yeah, exactly. Right there and try it by rotating the hip away from me. And tell me the difference. Is there a difference? Yeah, I feel like I'm back. When it opens, that contraction pattern is the opposite to what you want, yeah? You want, you want when your leg is off the ground, this glute, this lower back to let go so that this leg can come through, yeah? I want it to be open, I want it to be oh, closed. Yeah. You just, just having a feel? Way. Okay, yeah, good, good. Experimentation, lovely. So Trendelenburg, we're aware, it makes sense. We did double leg pogos. We're gonna go to single leg pogo. Single leg pogo, the aim, of course, is to do some plyometrics. But more importantly, the aim is that this hip stays higher than the opposite hip, not level, higher. So you're really pushing it through, you're really pushing through the ground so that the leg is on and that this pelvis is up. This leg stays out straight in front of you, okay? Okay, we're gonna up the pace a bit. Lovely. It's actually pretty decent from everybody, so I wouldn't overthink it. Okay, so by the time you've done five, 10 meters, start to add distance, still get the air time. Okay, when you're ready. Excellent, good. Slow walk back. Still make sure you get your pelvis all the way through. 